at any time we traveled the world with the Muhammad Ali Circus and ended up in Asia and Africa and at this point Munich Germany or uh, Dunn presents somewhat of an obstacle in that he was a tough paratrooper type and you know he was going to jump out with everything he had at the first round. Well, Muhammad Ali coming in 10 pounds lighter, as I said, at 220 off of that very bad showing against Jimmy Young, which he barely won in 15 rounds his last time out in Landover, Maryland. Dunn up on his toes, loosening up. There is the referee, Herbert Tauser, and we are about set to go in Munich, Germany for the heavyweight championship of the world. Can that man right there take it away from that man right there, the champion Muhammad Ali? The bell has sounded for round one, and up comes the champion, and right away, we have lots of action, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. Yes, Richard Dunn is that type of fighter that's going to pressure you and pressure you. Right off the bat, he came off with a punch that Ali countered beautifully with his right hand. Now, Ali is back into motion, which is what he figures will confuse Dunn. Dunn is plodding into his attack. He's not a, a not a beautiful looking fighter, I, I would say, Bob. He's sort of a, uh, what you charitably call a stinking left-hander. Well, well, one thing about this southpaw, the British had done, is that Ali has had a problem the last time he met Carl Mildenberg, the German, when uh, Ali uh, said going into that fight, as I recall, that he would have problems. Now, let's see if he's going to have any problems. Thus far, he's moving not only to his right, but to his left, and back and forth, up on his toes, still with the jab, but perhaps slugging it. I'm a little bit surprised he's really going to his opponent early here, Curtis. Well, the great thing about Ali, is, as you will see, is that he goes both ways. He goes to the left, he goes to the right. He confuses and befuddles people. Dunn's fight is to pressure him here at the very beginning, but it's hard to pressure Ali. He's so tall, and he moves so fluidly and so well. He goes both ways, confuses uh, the fighter. That was sort of an awkward move on Ali's part. Uh, Dunn's awkwardness at the beginning here is a little confusing to uh, Ali. Well, there is a strategy when you do face a fighter that leads uh, the opposite way as he's leading with his right hand, and... Uh, you, you do just what Ali does. He's going to his left, and you try to stay outside of his right foot. You just keep trying to take that punch away from the right jab away from him. And, of course, he, Ali doesn't have that much of a problem. He keeps that distance between him pretty well. And uh, his problem is how is he going to get to him real fast and put a little hurt on him so he won't be so brave at the beginning of this. We are midway through round one in Munich, Germany at the Olympic Hall. Muhammad Ali in the white trunks, landing with a good overhand right to the chin of Richard Dunn, the challenger. Richard Dunn, he, uh, he called uh, Joe Palooka at the beginning, and uh, Bob, you wouldn't think he was that old to remember Joe Palooka, would you? Well, I know we're not, so I don't <laughs> understand why he is. Less than coming up on the 32nd mark now of round one. Plenty of action here early in this fight coming from Munich. It is scheduled, remember, for 15. There are not many who think it'll go that far. The referee, Herbert Townsend, thus far not too involved in this fight. A nice slapping right again to the chin in the face of Richard Dunn by the champion Ali. Not very effective jab by uh, Richard Dunn, sort of just uh, slaps it out there, just sticks it out in front of you. Not very pretty, is it? Not well, very as, pretty. As you said, a stinking jab. 13 seconds remaining in round one. Now less than 10. And I'd say for the most part, Ferdy, this has been a good round for the defending champion, Muhammad Ali. Challenger up on their feet, ready for the round to start, and there it is. Round two underway. It is scheduled for 15. It is also for the heavyweight championship of the world, and that is the champion in the white trunks, the challenger in the dark trunks. The southpaw pecking away at the champion. The champion gloves high, taking one, two good shots to the chin, the champion does. And they come together briefly. The referee Herbert Townsend. This gives you an idea of how hard it is to fight left-handed people and look good. Now, you know, Ali's always looks sensational fighting whoever he's fighting. Yet he doesn't look the same when he fights the left hand. He's trying to figure it out. It, it's sort of an awkward style. It's an awkward pace and rhythm. He can't get it right at the at the beginning here. He can, he can land with that right hand pretty good like, right there, but he looks like he's slapping up hand into there. That's not Ali. That's not the sharp punching, beautiful punching Ali you see. Well, as we look at round two, continue to look at round two, there's an old saying in boxing that styles make fights, and this is a perfect example of that. Perfect example, Bob, and a good point. Ali, with all his speed, trying to overcome this awkwardness of the challenge of Richard Dunn. And Dunn is standing in there fighting with Ali. He's, he is not um, uh, taking a step backward 
and he is determined to do what he can. And look at this. At the very beginning, he's putting in left and right hands. It's just uh, a determination by the English paratrooper. He feels like he must get off and get these early rounds, and so far he's doing pretty good. Pretty good for 3.30 in the morning because that is the time that this bout got underway, Munich time. Ali rubbing a little lace in the face of the challenger. I don't think he meant it, Bob. He's really a very, very clean fighter. One of the cleanest fighters I've ever worked with. I mean, in all the tough fights that he's had, he never resorted to dirty tactics if he could help it. Well, with his talent, he really didn't have to. But that's the punchline of that story. But meantime, here we've got Dunn standing there and still Ali not doing too much to him the second round. And Good look shot. at him getting in with the left hand. Good shot by Dunn. Perhaps his best of the first two rounds. But Ali comes right back and snaps the head back. There was that Once, right twice. Hand. Almost looked like he hurt him. He did hurt him. They're, they're coming back and they're going right into action. And that's total to action. I think he hurt uh, Dunn. But Dunn is fighting right back. Well, he's, way showing, he left hand. he's showing Curdy he can't take a good punch because he took some some haymakers from the champion. But there he is, coming right back. The tough Britisher. Less than 30 seconds now remaining in this exciting second round from Munich, Germany. I must say, he could have gone down from any one of those shots. It wouldn't have been a surprise. He got some flush right hands right on the chin. And he came back with his own lefts. Well, still pressing, still coming forward is the challenger. As we are well under 10 seconds now, and counting down, round two. The bell has sounded for round three, and coming out of the corner and taking it right to the champion is the challenger, Richard Dunn. We're going to see, Ferdy, if Ali can follow up uh, the way he concluded round two with a tremendous barrage to the chin of the gutsy challenger, Richard Dunn, from uh, Britain. Well, I wouldn't think that Richard Dunn could take another round of that kind of punishment because that was really tough stuff that uh, Ali was throwing in there, and it was landing flush. I don't think there's any question, as I mentioned earlier, that Ali, a much trimmer, better-conditioned fighter in his near-upset loss in his last fight to Jimmy Young, the American, is trying to, as you see, dance around, become the old Ali. There it is, a, bit of a, a little bit of shuffle coming up here, perhaps. One, two combinations like that. But Bob Dunn comes back and slaps him with a couple of goes to the body. But Ali says, come on, Richard, give me some more of that. Ali's literally running across the ring at him. He was mad that he was interrupted in mid-dance. He was really looking good. He's showing off for the people. He's showing them that this Ali is the same old Ali that can dance around and pop that jab and look good and nobody can get to him. And, of course, Dunn interrupted the dance by driving him into the corner with a series of punches and making him look bad. So Ali is back, and let's see what he does to Mr. Dunn for his rudeness. Well, it doesn't look as if uh, the punches, perhaps from some of that punishment, that uh, there is effective uh, coming from Dunn. I noticed the last couple there, just uh, sort of just uh, sticking the glove out, not really putting the shoulder and putting the weight and stepping in with the punch. He's very tentative with his punches. He's just sort of trying to feel out where, where he is, and that doesn't hurt at all, and it really gets you killed if uh, Ali starts counter-punching over that. You really, in boxing, you got to go all out. You've you got to let your shots fly. We're in round three. It is scheduled for 15. Just under a minute now in round three. Ali keeps going to that straight right hand. There he landed it again. Just as I said it, he, he has apparently seen a weakness in, in uh, Dunn, and he is exploiting it to the fullest. The last round, he almost knocked him out with that right hand. And there's Dunn in a nice exchange, driving Ali back into the ropes. Well, Doesn't seem to bother him. He has seen to. He, he'll, he'll snap out that right hand for two or three times and then jump in with the left. Let's see if he does it again. He has done it very effectively here in, uh, in this round as we move inside of 30 seconds of round three. Pretty good jab on that. Not bad. There it is. Puts one, two. Jabs twice with the right. Gets him off balance a little bit, being the southpaw, and then follows it up. Not doing bad this round. That was a much better round than the second round as we count down to seven seconds. Okay, that's it. The second's running out on round three. It's amazing that he's got that stamina and that endurance to come back at Ali after three knockdowns. Here comes Ali just looking for that right hand. There it is. Well, it's scheduled for 15, but the way it went in round four with three knockdowns of the challenger, Richard Dunn, 
it hardly seems it's going to go more than another minute or two. Ali can almost tie his left hand behind him because he's taken a one-handed approach to this fight. I guess he figured with a left-hander you can cross that right, and that's what he's been doing. He's letting Dunn rest and get himself together, which might be a bad idea. Well, he seems to come out of it. The cobwebs are out of his head, at least momentarily. Of course, Ali in this round, number five, has not really put a haymaker on him. No, he Rushes hasn't landed that right hand yet. He's now gone back to using the left a little bit to set up the right, which is, of course, great fighting technique. Good left. Nothing works without the left hand first, as all great boxing trainers will tell you. This is an exception in this fight since he's landed a lot of right hands where he never threw or even started to throw the left hand. There it goes again without even a hint of a jab. There it goes again. Well, obviously, those punches by Don uh, don't have too much behind him because Ali is sort of just uh, letting him hitting him almost at will and just... Just that he's thrown him is good enough. Just that he's standing right there in front of him throwing him. That seemed to short-circuit a few circuits that time. Well, some thought that Dunn didn't deserve to get in this ring with this great champion, but I would say he's uh, proved that with honor beyond doubt. He's fought with honor. There's no question about it. You can't ask a fighter to fight harder than this. Admittedly, they're a different class of fighter. Muhammad Ali may be the greatest fighter that ever lived. He's not fighting that kind of a fighter right here, but he does have all kind of heart, and, he, and it is a legitimate championship contender that is in there. Well, he may be making a mistake, Don. Looks like he's sort of leading with his chin a little bit. There he goes down. Another right cross by the champion. And for the fourth time in this fight, as the referee mentions to Ali to go to a neutral corner, Ali seems to care less. Dunn is up at about the count of eight. And we're back with the action. And Ali winding up. One, two, and there he, is. And he goes again. It doesn't seem to be any question that, that he should not continue. Well, he's out on his feet, Ferdy, and as a doctor, you know, it's about time. And look at Ali. He's look won. at Ali's windmilling That's style. it. That's it. The referee, Herbert Townsend, is stopping it here in the fifth round. Still the heavyweight champion of the world, successfully defending for the 16th time, Muhammad Ali being greeted by his well wishes and back into his corner. Well, one thing significant about this uh, successful defense for that man,